the Son, glory to the Spirit who lives in me. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Spirit. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Spirit. My dear friends, we entered into the fifth week of the Lent. As we are drawing close to the Holy Week, where we are going to experience the death and resurrection of the Lord, and we are going to celebrate this great event of Paschal Mysteries, God is preparing our hearts in this Sunday. The Lord teaches us from the prophet Ezekiel, Three important truths. When God encounters man, first of all, he teaches man to open his grave, to show his own inner heart, how it has become like a graveyard, how it is to be prepared to meet the Lord. And then the Lord says, I will breathe my life into you. How the man who lives in the graveyard, how the man lives in sin and death, how the man is dying and giving bad order, smell in the life of this world can receive the life of Christ. And having received the new life, how thirdly man can receive God's own spirit and become a witness to God. So shall we then join with the Lord and asking the Lord, Lord help us to see our own graveyard where we are dying in our sin and in our filth. And we pray, Lord, Come into our life. Jesus, come with your life that we may have your life when we confess our sin, when we return back to our God, we receive his life. Having received his life is not enough. May we join with the Lord and hunger for the Holy Spirit whom he wants to give it to us that with the Spirit of God, how our life will be renewed and how we can become a gift to renew the life of everyone. Lifting up our hands, ask the Lord, lift me up to your mountain, Lord, to your presence, Lord, to your life and to your spirit, Lord. Lord, we are dying in our sin. We are dying in our weakness. Our nations are dying. Our people are perishing. You said in 2nd Chronicle chapter 7 verse 14 All those who come in my name If they humble themselves If they bow down before me And repent for their sins I will forgive their sins 
and i will raise them up and i will heal their nations lord we need your healing lord our nations need your healing touch lord come raise us up to your holy mountain to the mountain of your holy presence to the mountain of your holy life to the mountain of your holy spirit lord call upon him lift me up to your mountains o oh lord where i can see you face to face lift me up to your mountain o oh lord where i can see you face to face lift me up to your mountain o lord where i can see you face to face lift me up to your mountain o lord where i can see you face to face why there is so much this harmony in me why there is so much this harmony in me won't you dispel the darkness from me won't you dispel the darkness from me oh the holy presence cover my whole being oh the holy presence cover my whole being cover my whole being cover my whole being placing your hands over your heart recognize your sins acknowledge your sin the book of proverbs chapter 28 verse 26 if any of my people if you cover up your sin you will not prosper if you acknowledge your sin and repent for your sin the mercy of god will come upon you this is the moment of grace this is the moment we can drop back to god oh people of god return to god what i want to do i am unable to do what i should not do the very thing i do what i want to do i am unable to do what i should not do the very thing i do who will say this wretched being who will say this wretched being thanks to you lord for your saving grace thanks to you lord for your saving grace who the holy presence cover my whole being oh thy holy presence cover my whole being oh the holy presence cover my whole being
at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive our sins and lead us to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord, our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. A reading from the book of prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses from 12 to 14. Book of prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses from 12 to 14. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, and rise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you home into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and rise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. May your response be. With the Lord there is mercy and full of fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. Your response, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness, for this we river you. Your response, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchman for daybreak. Let the watchman count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord. Your response, with, with the, the Lord, Lord there is there mercy is and fullness of redemption. of redemption. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, Israel, indeed, he will redeem from all its iniquity. Your response? With, with the, the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, 
chapter 8 verses from 8 to 11 a reading from the letter of saint paul to the romans chapter 8 verses from 8 to 11 those who are in the flesh cannot please god but you are not in the flesh you are in the spirit if the spirit of god really dwells in you anyone who dwells not have the spirit of christ does not belong to him but if christ is in you although your bodies are dead because of sin your spirits are alive because of righteousness if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you the word of god thanks, thanks be, be to god. god gospel acclamation praise to christ I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me shall never die. Praise to Christ, eternal word of the living God. Praise to thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. John's Gospel, chapter 11, the holy verses from 1 to 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, in the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were but now seeking to stone you, and you are going there again. Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he doesn't stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. Thus he spoke, and then he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awake him out of sleep. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may also die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary sta sat, sat in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, 
your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying quickly, the teacher is here and he is calling you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary, when she came where Jesus was and saw him, fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time, there will be an order, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I know that. Thou hears me always. But I have said this on account of people standing by, that they may believe that thou didst send me. When he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bondage, bound with bandages, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Lift up both the hands of yours. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach us the meaning of life. The meaning of today's word of God. Shall we all lift up our hands? Ask the Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. We are broken and wounded. We come to you, Lord. Raise up us, Lord, as you raised up Lazarus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, 
First reading is from the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 12 to 14. In Ezekiel chapter 37, we hear how the great prophet of God, who was called to serve God, and the people of Israel who were chosen, when they were in Babylon, they went through all kinds of pain and suffering, humiliation and death. And they began to cry to God. When God called the prophet through a vision, the prophet says, Lord, we are all like dry bones. We are all have lost the life. And we are all scattered bones, Lord. And we are now have lost our life. So the Lord says, I have created you. I have come that you may have life, life in all its fullness. You are not created for death. You are not created for a joke. You have come from God who is life. And I want to give back life to you. That's why Jesus said, in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 19, because I live, you will also live. And that's what we are going to experience in the Holy Week, in the Monday, Thursday, Jesus humbling himself, washing the feet of the disciples, teaching them the meaning of love, whereby they will live amidst People who are filled with the bitterness, with the hurt, wounds, revenge. And he is going to show us on the Good Friday, dying on the cross, shedding the blood for us. How he has paid a price to raise us up to life. And on the Easter Sunday, we are going to experience how through the power of the Spirit, he rose up from death and nothing on this world can stop him to be in the graveyard. And the same Jesus is going to give us the same spirit and he is going to give us life. That's why in today's first reading he tells us, I will put my spirit within you and you will live. In order to put the spirit in us, he says, Three things he is going to do. Number one, behold, I am going to open your graves. The first thing he says, I am going to open the grave of yours to show you how you are dying. You who is called to live on this earth as a child of God, why are you dying in the grave? And you are perishing. 
And second, he says, though you will know that you are dying in your sin and you are perishing, your God will not keep quiet. The Savior has come to give you his life. And what are the ways through which the Lord Jesus is going to give you life? This is the second thing he will teach us. He is telling the prophet Ezekiel. And then once we are possessing the life of God, he will raise us up with his own spirit. Yes. Third, he will breathe his spirit into us. And in the gospel, he teaches us about two sisters of Lazarus. A young man called Lazarus is dead. And there are two people, his own sisters, Mary and Martha. Martha, a woman of the flesh, a woman of the world, who continues to live in death and in graveyard. And she is not opening herself to the life and she never receives the healings and miracles. On the other hand, in the same house, another lady lives in the same condition. She also lost her brother, Lazarus. But she opens herself to Christ. She opens herself to Jesus. She surrenders herself to Jesus. And Jesus gently leads her to life. And then she makes her to see the resurrection of Jesus, the power of the resurrection by raising up Lazarus. Today, Jesus is coming into our lives also. It's up to us whether we behave like Martha, we continue to remain as a people of the flesh and continue to remain in the graveyard or we open ourselves, whatever may be our situation, the moment we open ourselves to Christ Jesus, the life of Christ will move into us. And when the Lord sees that we are prepared to receive his spirit, he will give his spirit and raise us up our spirit to be with him. Hallelujah. Shall we then first of all realize how we are Dying in our graveyard. The Lord is going to open our graves. That's what he says. Number one. Jesus is coming to be with his people. Mary and Martha. Mary is learning to be with Jesus. Who has come to be with him. Whereas Martha is not willing to be with Jesus. Who has come to be with with her. This made the difference in both of their lives. One met the Savior, one who remained as the woman of the world. Jesus said in St. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 5 and 7, I am the wine, you are my branches. If you remain in me as I am remaining in you, you will bear much fruit. God has come to be with every human being. But there are very few human beings, they dare to be with the Lord. They are dare to be with the Lord who is with them. And then they make a difference in the life. Holy Spirit is given to everybody. And those who give themselves to the Holy Spirit, they make a difference in their lives. And that's what happened to Mary. When Jesus came, we read before this incident in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 41 onwards. Jesus is going to Jerusalem. He is going to die. He has no time. But he knows that Mary and Martha who took care of him for many days, many times in Bethany. He goes to their homes to build up their faith because he is going to die. They are going to hear many things about Jesus. He is going to be stripped naked. He is going to be blamed as a, a great criminal. And he is going to be crucified. The death which is meant for the worst sinners. 
and they should not lose their faith they should not lose their courage so jesus on the way to jerusalem he goes to the house of beth mary and martha to bethany and having realized the heart of jesus what jesus is communicating to them mary sat at the feet of the lord whereas martha he did not understand jesus and she is busy in preparing something jesus has not come to eat there he is going to jerusalem going to be crucified he is going to be killed he wants to build up their faith blessed is the man who recognizes the time of their life you should recognize your time in what time are you living if you are not learning to live understand your time now god has given us through this corona virus to be at our homes for 21 days maybe later more days we don't know god's will he is going to keep us for many days for what to to be with the lord god has come to be with you in these 21 days if you are going to be busy in making biryanis you doing many things visiting each other sorry going on calling on watching this and that you are going to miss the power of the resurrection in your life this is not the time to play around this is the time to be with the lord who has come to be with us and jesus tells very clearly me martha martha you don't understand my time you don't understand your time you don't understand in what time we are living you are busy busy with many things and you are troubling yourself and you are troubling everybody she comes and complains to jesus look i am busy in making and mary is sitting at your feet and you are not bothered she is blaming the lord also she is blaming mary she is blaming the lord yes when you don't understand the time in which god has placed you you will not be peaceful you will be finding fault at everybody you will find your life is miserable you are going to be in the grave on the other hand mary sat at the feet of the lord and in luke's chapter 10 verse 42 the lord said mary has chosen the best thing and it will not be taken away from her so you should know the time the the time of her very little time i have i have come here to be with you in that little time you have given 100 percentage to me mary has given her whole heart to me and she is going to receive me and what she has received that is me will continue to sustain her even the moments of struggle that are going to come in her way yes later all kinds of painful experiences are going to come it is our experience in the lord is going to sustain us that's why in the book of ephesian chapter 5 verse 16 to 17 the lord says our time is very bad so take care and redeem your time because the days are evil the days are evil so make use of your time and bring the best out of your time if you don't bring the best out of your time and busy with roaming around yourself your mind is busy with hundred and one thing and you don't learn your mind you don't train your mind to be with the lord you are going to be in the graveyard if you open your heart to the lord you are going to live experience the life of the lord it's up to you the lord says that's why we read in the book of colossian chapter 3 verse 23 where the lord clearly tells us can somebody read please colossian chapter 3 verse 23 work willingly at whatever you do work willingly with what willingly work willingly at whatever you do whatever you do do it willingly for the lord 
Yes. As though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Whatever you do, do it to bring glory to God. As though you are doing it for God. Don't allow your time to take you to wrong places, to wrong thinking and to spoil you and to keep you to the graveyard where you will sink and die. It's up to you whether you remain in the graveyard or you rise up from the graveyard. That's why we read in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9 to 11 says, How long, O sluggard, will you rest? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding the arms to rest. Then will poverty come upon you like a highwayman and want like an armed man. You will be captured by the enemy. That's what the Lord says. So if you want to come out of your grave, take care of your time. For what purpose are you using your time? Mary learned to use her time to sit at the feet of the Lord and to possess something eternal, that which is life-giving. That's why in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, it is written, Don't throw away that which is eternal for that which is passing away. Your time, this is the moment of grace for you. Focus your life on that which is life-giving. Second, today the Lord is telling us, not only you learn to be with the Lord, or to be with the Lord who is with you, then you will bear fruit. But also the Lord says, second thing, if, whether you are in the graveyard, or whether you are giving life, will depend on, the heart of yours. The heart of yours. You have to check your heart. You have to check the desires of your heart. That's why we read in the book of Proverbs 4.23, from the heart flows life. That's why in the book of Jeremiah, the Lord says in chapter 9, who can understand the heart of man? Who can understand the sickness of man? Only I, the Lord, knows. Yes, the Lord is asking, check your heart. Now, the Lord is coming to Martha. And the Martha says, in John's Gospel, chapter 11, Jesus, if you were here, my brother would not have died. Then Jesus says, your brother will rise again. Jesus is giving life to her. But that woman is not willing to come out of her own graveyard. Her own thinking. She says, I know in the last day he will rise again. He is not willing to accept what God is telling her. She is in her own little world. She is not willing to come out of it. Her pride, her pride boasting, I know everything. A mentality, I know everything. I don't need anybody to teach me. Not opening oneself to the Lord who comes to us. If you don't check your heart, what kind of thinking, what kind of, whether it is really crying for God, for deliverance, or it is you are allowing your heart to be filled with the fear, filled with the confusion, and you are living as though as it comes, let it come. No, if you don't recognize your heart, if you don't learn to see your heart, if you don't train your heart to the Lord, you are going to be continue to be in the graveyard. If you are understanding your heart and giving your heart to the Lord, you will receive the life of God. This is what the Lord says. Both Mary and Martha both said the same thing. Very interesting. Martha said, 
Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, your brother will rise again. She says, I know in the last day he will rise again. But Jesus never gives us up. Though we don't move with him, we are holding on to our own thinking. But he is so much loving, he can't afford to lose us. He says in John 3, 26, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he sent his only son that not a single one should perish. Everyone should have life. So Jesus is not giving up Martha. He says, when I said, your brother will rise again, you are saying in the last days, no, my dear, I am the resurrection. I am the life. If you believe in me, do you believe in me? He's making her, forcing her to say. In verse 25 of John's Gospel, chapter 11, she didn't know what to say. She says, yes, yes, I believe in you, Lord. That. And then, leaving Jesus in the street, she goes away. Jesus has come to be with Mary, Martha, and she leaves Jesus in the street, and she goes away home. Can you understand the mentality? If you are not alert to your heart, what are the things that are roaming in, a, in your heart? Jesus is coming to give life to you, but if you are going to stay in your own heart, in your own thoughts, in your own little life, unknowingly, you to will leave the Lord in the street. The Lord is coming to be with you. Whereas, look at Mary. We read, Jesus was standing in the same place. Martha went and said to Mary, that preacher has come and he is calling you. She is disturbed and she disturbs Mary also. But Mary she goes to Jesus, runs to Jesus. And when she ran to Jesus, she tells Jesus the same word which Martha said, Master, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And she tells, and by saying, she is not even waiting for Jesus to say anything. She just falls flat at the feet of the Lord saying, Lord, but now you have come. That's enough for me. Now you have come to me, us and that's enough. Your feet is our strength. Now you lead us whatever way you wish us. Yes, God is coming. And the way your heart is going to react or respond to God, you can react in your life to all the things that are happening or you respond to that with the help of God is going to decide and determine your life. Whether you are going to continue to experience the graveyard and the bad smell order in your life or you are going to see the resurrection, new life of all that you have lost in life. Mary fell at the feet of Jesus and Jesus lifted her up, lifted her up, and she, Jesus saw her crying, and Jesus also started to cry. What you sow, you will reap. Mary and Martha both said the same, but not only merely speaking, next they began to give the heart. One refused to give the heart, Martha, and she remained as a woman in the graveyard. Mary gave her heart to Jesus and allowed Jesus to guide her. Now Jesus takes her hand and takes her to the graveyard to raise up her brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Third, whether you are in the graveyard or 
whether you are going to receive the life depends on checking your life on your relationships yes when you check up your relationships you will find whether you are going to remain in the graveyard or whether you are going to receive the new life of the lord many people throw themselves into the misplaced affections affections giving their heart and relationships to wrong people to wrong relationships to wrong habits they end up their life with a death with a graveyard look we read in john's gospel chapter 11 verse 29 and verse 31 we read when mary was at home so many jews came to meet mary and martha martha is not at home so they are giving company to mary they are talking to mary they are consoling mary they are showing affection and love to mary because she is in sadness she has lost her brother and then martha suddenly enters into the house and says look the master has come master has come when she heard jesus has come though there are so many people who are there to love her she knew what is the place of jesus in her relationship what is the place of the people who have come 101 people will come in our lives showing love affection this and that but you should know where jesus is in your relationship if you give priority to the lord jesus and the lord will build up your life if you don't give the first place to your god and if you give that first place for bringing alcohol or to a wrong relationship or to the things of this earth what to to what you give your first priority that will shape your life look at mary she gave the first priority to jesus though so many people were there when she heard jesus has come immediately she rose up the people are also rising up but she is not bother about them she goes straight to jesus falls at the feet of the lord and she weeps and she receives the love of jesus and she gives her heart to jesus and she saw her dead brother lazarus alive my dear friends to what are you giving your heart is very very important we read in the book of numbers chapter 25 verse 6 to 8 there was an israelite he when god was guiding the people the enemies wanted to capture the people of israelites so in the desert outside of the camp they were dancing the canaanites women were dancing with their nakedness the drinks were available to them and people were running after them to enjoy them one fellow one of the israelite who had seen the miracles and wonders who has crossed the red sea who had ate manna who got who drank water from the rock he forgot everything what the lord had given to him and he saw the mobites women are in the camp he went outside of the camp of israelites he sinned with that woman and that is not sufficient he brought that woman inside the camp and moses is watching aaron is watching what is this defiling our camp you went out and sinned and brought that woman to enjoy for tomorrow day after tomorrow moses and aaron are crying then a young man 
Aaron's grandson, Eliezer's son, his name is Pinagas. He saw, he was filled with so much zeal for God. My, my tent, this tent meant for God. You cannot defile it. My relationship, my life is meant for my God. And if anybody is trying to defile it, I will not keep quiet. He took the spear and went and poked that man and poked at that lady and killed both of them. Because this defilement took place, living a sinful life, giving one's life to wrong relationship, there came plague. The Bible says, by that time, so many people were killed in the desert. A very big plague came. But when Pinagak expressed his love for God, his zeal for God, God saw that and he stopped that plague. Today, all over the world, people are dying. The solution is, if you raise up your heart for God, if you commit your life with the zeal for God, Lord, my life is once on this earth. There are so many things available in the world. The world gives so many possibilities to me, but my life is meant for you. I will live and die for you. I will bring your glory to this world. I will live for your glory like Pinagas. If you commit your life, you will be a cause to throw away the plague from us. Pinagas, with the zeal for God, he destroyed the plague which came and destroyed many people. Yes, the misplaced affection will keep you in graveyard. Your zeal for God will destroy the plague and bring the spirit of God into your life. Fourth, the spirit of discouragement. The spirit of discouragement will come around us. And that will keep us always in the graveyard. Now, Jesus, taking the hand of Mary and going to the graveyard to raise up the, to the tomb, to raise up Lazarus, now hearing that Jesus has gone along with Mary to the tomb of Lazarus. Martha is running from home and she's coming to the graveyard, the, to the tomb, and Jesus says, remove the stone. Immediately, she puts the discouraging spirit. Saying, Jesus, no, 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 no. Please don't open the st stone. Already Lazarus is dead for four days and bad smell is coming. When God comes to renew our lives, Satan will try to keep us in the graveyard by filling our hearts with a discouraging spirit. Yes, we read in the book of First King, chapter 19, when God raised up the great prophet Elijah, the, he allowed the spirit of Depression to enter into him through a lady called Jezebel. And verse 3 to 5 we read, A man who brought fire from heaven, same Elijah, now he left the place of mission which God has given to him. When you get the spirit of discouragement, number one, you will leave the mission God has given to you. And you will have your own way of thinking, your own interest, your own life you will build up. You will forget the mission for which God has called you. Number two, Elijah, he not only left the place, he left the servant whom God gave to him to train and make a great disciple. You will leave the people with whom God has called you to live. You will leave your wife and trying to, your wife is at home, you will be so angry at your wife and you will be talking at some another woman, laughingly, cracking joke. Your own husband is suffering. You won't bother him because he did not bother you. Why should I bother him? Spirit of anger will rule you. Take care. 
Elijah left the mission. Elijah left the people. The spirit of discouragement made him. Third, he became depressed. As though he lost everything. And one full day he walked. Without eating, without drinking. Without even noticing how he is dressed up. And fourth, he went and sat under the broom tree. Where snakes and scorpions stay. Near the lion's tent. He reached the place of Satan. The spirit of discouragement will take you away from the mission. Will take you away from the people whom God has given to you. It will lead you to depression. And it will lead you to the evil's place. You will talk evil language. You will throw yourself to the evil habits. And you will not bother. Your soul is dying. And Elijah, fourth he said, Lord, it is not worth living. I want to die. Spirit of suicide will catch you. Yes, spirit of discouragement will make you, number one, to lose, your, lose sight of the mission for which God has called you. The purpose for which God has called you into the world. To lose the people whom God has given to you. Not bother about the people. Third, he will make you depression. To enter into depression. Fourth, he will take you to the wrong evil habits and evil thinking, evil languages. Fourth, the spirit of suicide will enter into you. That's what happened to Martha also. Spirit of discouragement. But what did Jesus do? Immediately, Jesus did something to destroy the spirit of discouragement. When Martha said, please don't open the stone, the bad smell is coming to destroy the spirit of discouragement. Jesus told Martha, Martha, keep quiet. Didn't I tell you, if you believe in me, you will see the miracle of God. If you believe, you will see the wonders of God. And before Martha opens her mouth, immediately Jesus turns that spirit of discouragement into a spirit of prayer. Spirit of thanksgiving to the Father. And immediately he raised up his eyes and started to pray. It is only prayer. You, the spirit of discouragement will come around you. But you have to immediately move into spirit of prayer. That's why Jesus said, and Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, place all your worries unto God. Believing you have a God who cares for you. Jesus did not allow the spirit of discouragement that came from Martha to rule him. He turned into prayer and through prayer he entered into the spirit and brought life. So he began to start with the prayer of thanksgiving. Father, I thank you that you have always heard my prayer. Second, he enters into faith. He thanks the Father and establishes faith. Father, you have always heard my prayer. You are a loving Father. You are a faithful Father. You never left me down, Lord. He thanks the Father. He establishes the faith by confessing that Father is a faithful God. Third, he says, I have a mission, Father, that the people, those who are here, they should know that you are in me. That you are the God of living. You are the God of resurrection. And you have sent me into this world. They should know that I am the source of life. And having said this, immediately he opened his mouth and said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. Mary, who was praying along with Jesus, saw her brother. Being tied up, Jesus says, untie him, let him come out. Yes, either you are going to be in the graveyard or get back into life, just depend on you. Yes, the evil will come with a spirit of discouragement. Close your eyes and pray.
close your eyes and pray. Number one, whether are you going to be with the Lord who has come to be with you? Are you going to spend your precious time in a meaningful way? Second, are you going to allow your heart with pride and boasting or are you allow, going to allow your heart to come to the Lord and give the heart to the Lord, surrender yourself to the Lord? Third, is your misplaced affection, the affection that is meant for God, is misplaced for many other things, is going to keep you in the graveyard. Or even if thousands of people are coming behind me, loving me, my first love is for my God. Like Pinagas, with a great seal for God, you are going to build up your life. Fourth, the enemy is going to keep you in graveyard with a discouraging spirit. Are you going to move with the life of prayer and life of confessing that our God is a faithful God and build up the faith by the word of God and live the life of God. See the life of God. Place your hands over your heart and pray. The fifth one is Mary opened her heart to the word of God. Luke 10.42 says, Mary opened her heart to the word of God. The word that we hear will produce the faith and the faith we have in the Lord will help us to overcome the enemy. Romans 10.17 says, By hearing the word, you enter into faith. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 says, Who can conquer the world? He who believes that Jesus is the Lord. By the word, you get faith. By faith, you overcome the world. You come out of the graveyard. And that's what Mary did. Can you surrender your life to him? Can you build up your zeal for him? Tell him, the Lord, Lord, the love I have for you is only a shadow of your love for me, Lord. Your deep abiding love. Lord, my life is in your hands, Lord. Let my love grow for you. Let it become a zeal for you. If I live even for 10 days, let me live with you and for you, Lord. You have created me that I may be with you, God of miracles and wonders. And bring miracles and wonders to this world. Pinagas, he built up zeal for you. And through his love and zeal for you, he destroyed the plague. Today our people are dying, Lord. And it is our love for you. It is our zeal for you. He is going to destroy the evil. Help us to pray like you with thanksgiving, with the faith in you and to bring forth life out of death, Lord. The love I have for you, my Lord, is only a shadow. Shine 
the dreams I have today, my Lord, is only a shadow of your dreams for me. Only a shadow of all that will be. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. My love for you will grow, my Lord. Your light in me will shine your light in me will shine lifting up your hands wherever you are ask the holy spirit to raise you up if you are open to the life of god if you move with the god not only the life of god will grow in you jesus said in john 14:19 because I live, you will live. But also he will raise up the Holy Spirit. As Romans 8, 11 says, He who raised up Jesus from the death, if that spirit is in you, he will raise up your mortal bodies, your dead life, and he will make you, make your life full of his presence, his glory. Ask him, breathe upon me. O Holy Spirit of God, breathe upon me. O breath of God. Yes, Lord, we hunger for you. Ask the Lord to breathe his breath into you. And as he called Lazarus, come out. May he bring life out of you. Seeing your zeal for you. Pray along with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For you have always heard me. You are my God. You are a faithful God. Lord, I thank you. I praise you and worship you. What you have done in my life. Oh, all that is dead in me. All that you have given to me, which are dead. Now let them come out. May your spirit come out. May your glory and power and honor. May your heaven begin to work in me. May your glory begin to operate in me. Your miracles and wonders begin to operate in me. Breathe upon me. Breath of God. Breathe upon me. Spirit of the Lord. As I live my hands in surrender to your name most God I'm yielding to your spirit I'm yielding to your spirit I'm walking in yours and walking in your love, love. Lord Jesus we adore your holy name. We adore your holy name. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. As I raise my hands As in surrender. Your name most high. Your name most high. I'm yielding to your spirit. I'm yielding to your spirit. I'm walking in your love. And walking in your love. Lord Jesus, I adore your holy name. I 
want more love more power more of you lord in my life i will worship you i will glorify you like mary though my brother is dead i will fall at your feet and i will see the glory maybe i have lost many things in the life doesn't matter to me when i have you in fact i lost nothing lord in the world give me there are hundreds of people maybe around me many things may try to pull me try to show me love this world and all its glory is passing away help me lord to orient my heart to you the truth help me lord not to become victimized to this dirty world help me lord to hunger for you like pinagas to have zeal for you let me not lose the people whom you have given to me the mission that you have given to me and enter into discouraging spirit to the spirit of suicide like elija and even him you raised him lord please raise us up your people lord with more of your love more of your power more of you oh lord give us lord we hunger for you lord thank you jesus was conceived by the power of the holy spirit born of the virgin mary he suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of god the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen let's join with the savior who wants to raise us up from the graveyard who wants to give us his life and his own spirit that we may become worthy to come out of our graveyard and to have his spirit for this let's pray to the lord lord hear our prayer lord, lord hear our, our prayer, prayer. Lord we pray for our the church pray for our holy father we pray for our archbishop we pray for our patron gobind joji we pray for all the bishops priests we pray for the faithful 
We pray for the whole church, especially the people at Rome, the people who are losing their courage and faith and pain in pain. We pray, Lord, may you strengthen them, raise them up from the graveyard, and may they experience your life and your spirit. For this, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our nation. Pray for our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his cabinet ministers and all the government officials and our Chief Minister Chandra Sekhar Rao and all those who work with him and all the officials who are working day and night to bring forth healing to our nation, to protect our nation from the plague, coronavirus. May your power operate in us Seeing our prayers and zeal for you, you destroy the evil, the virus from our nation and protect our people, Lord. We pray to the Lord. Prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are working in the front line, the medical personnel, the doctors, the nurses, and all those who are working in the medical shops and many other ways they work day and night, especially the police and many government officials who work day and night for our country, for our state. May they all be blessed and may their families be protected. For this, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are suffering with coronavirus. May they all soon receive healing. May they all repent for their sins. May they all return back to the Lord and experience the healing touch of the Lord. For this, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are living in fear, worries and discouragement. Lord, your word says, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of courage, love and self-discipline. Fill our hearts and our minds to have zeal for you, to have love for you, and to courageously take step to live for you, and to discipline our minds and our hearts, to throw away all that is not of thine from our lives, and to focus and orient our lives for you. For this, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the society of the Holy Spirit, and for all its praise wherever they are, and our brothers, and all the people, especially for the Paul and the team who are working day and night to bring God's word through Sangamon Plus TV. May all of them be blessed. May the society be built with the grace and power of God. For this, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray in silence raising all our intentions to the Lord. Lord, you are the truth. You are the resurrection and life. And all those who believe in you will never die. Even though they face death, they will rise again. Yes, Lord, you are the resurrection. All those who believe in you see the miracles and wonders of yours. That's what you have promised us. And we pray along with you, thanking you for all that you have done in our lives, for your faithfulness in our lives. And we surrender once again to you. May we grow in our zeal and love for you and live for you. For this, along with the intercession of our blessed mother and all the angels, we make our prayers to you. Amen. Amen.
Hey friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to, the, to Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks, as in exultant we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which is given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Tuma Balavar Archbishop, Govind Joji our patron, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Let's pray with confidence to the Father. The words are Savior has taught us. 
our our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Greet one another. Peace of Jesus. Lamb of God, Lamb of you God. take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the broken bread, who has come to heal the broken hearts, to raise us all of us from the graveyard to his life and to his spirit. Happy are we who are called to take part in this meal of love. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. It is our offering that we make to God brings glory and honor to God with whatever God has given to us. We always honor God and wherever you are, whatever you like to offer to God, please raise it up in your hands. I'll pray for you. Lord, please accept the offering of your people which they want to offer it to you for this great work of glory. Bless them and their families. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Those who like to offer your offerings to the beautiful work of carrying the word of God all over the world to the ministry of proclamation of the work that is having at Moina Bath, you can send it, your offering, through Google Pay. The phone number is given below. In case if you want, you can write down now. The number is 98 -6 May God bless you for your offering for the Lord. Shall we all stand up and pray? Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God said, 
Jesus.